Testing, testing. Still same thing. Yeah. Testing, testing. There it is. Hey, How about now? You guys hear me? Tell them, I want to see that uh, still Robert Simpson says no sound. Kelly said no sound. Dustin says no sound. Still no sound? Hold on. Well, if somebody says there you go. Hey, they can hear. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That, if you want to know how long the delay is on the stream, that's how long it is. Um, so uh, there we go. Uh, oh, you guys are a mix of no sound and it's working. So I'm 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 gonna go with the it's working people. Uh, so uh, my computer crapped out again. Sorry. Okay. It seems to be okay. We seen oh still crackling. That's on. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Let me. I'm gonna turn the game down. And see if that. Helps. Uh, what's that? Test, no, test, test. How about that? The crackling go away? Okay, that should get to it. Sound is great, Debbie says. Okay. So, oh, there's, there's the, you're right, the game. Oh, okay. All right, there we go. Happening. All right. So, uh, I think, I don't know if you guys saw something I tweeted today. First of all, first of all, I want you to know that the panic porn is coming for you. They are coming for you. Uh the stock market dropped. I mean, we like we've been discussing the last couple of days, we're heading into something, some kind of an outbreak. It looks like it was interesting that Dr. Atlas tweeted that it's only in states that have not yet ever had an outbreak, which is not true. Uh, we're seeing a little uptick in other states as well. But states that um, were way down are now kind of joining the rest of us, at least uh, as a population percentage of population. Um, so that's not all that surprising. It's kind of interesting. It makes you wonder whether we've hit some sort of relative herd immunity based on our how we're behaving now in more populous states that have had outbreaks. But uh, the overall data for the country looks like we are heading into some challenging hospital data. Uh, the death rate is not clearly going up. The case rate is going up. It's going up to its highest level so far. Uh, I'll make sure. Yeah, it's going up you know, up, but it's still a case-demic. We're still at relatively low levels of hospitalization and reminding everyone that we encourage hospitalization to give all the good new treatments that we're using, like remdesivir, that kind of thing, when we used to turn people away from the hospital or discourage hospitalization. Um, so in any event, uh, the, what uh, Dr. Atlas did put up, though, uh, you're, you're saying maybe he's being untruthful. I, I don't know what he's thinking, but he did put up some data I thought was interesting, which was that apparently only 6% of the hospital beds in the country are occupied by COVID cases, 6%. And there was some recent data came out that showed that the impact on delay of treatment is becoming rather problematic, particularly for heart attack and stroke. And so people are not coming to the hospital until they're really sick. So the hospital beds are getting filled up by people that are sick because of delay in treatment. Um, C. David, uh, case demic is the language of COVID truthers. Um, I don't know what COVID truthers are, uh, and I don't know uh, if you prefer me to say, uh, rather than case demic, just say we're not having an uh, increase in death rate, we're not having an increase in hospitalization, we're having increase in cases. And it's prim primarily in people that are not getting terribly sick and not needing hospitalization. Uh, now, obviously, if people are in risk categories, you want to be very, very cautious about that. But the really the, the thing I've been thinking a lot lately about how horrible, what a horrible job the public health officials have done in public health messaging. I can't get over how bad it's been. Some of these people are the same people that were involved in the HIV and AIDS epidemic, and they learned there how to do it. There was a it took a while, but the consensus was clearly there and remains to this day that you stay positive, you don't judge, you create narratives, you use humor, you don't preach. I mean, all these things, and you don't scare and you don't use words like shelter in place. You motivate behavior. You motivate uh, proper, proper health behaviors. There, there's never been a time when engaging in mandated uh totalitarian types of mandates from above that is that ended in good in, in good outcomes for the overall health of someone um yes there are bad fires in orange county i'm aware of that yes. i'm in i'm in newport beach right now but where our kids were giving us a play-by-play -play. 
Yeah, so sugar-free, there's a lot of new cases. We're having a lot of new cases, but the hospitalization rate is holding steady. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. It may go up. It may go up. Um, I'm really hoping we don't see an increase in the death rate. If that continues flat or down, I will consider things really triumphant. But we're in that stage that we've been in a couple times before in the epidemic when you don't know kind of what's coming next. You don't know what direction things are going. Uh, I did get explanation for the... Uh, the quad, you know, the, the quintupling of cases in Los Angeles County. Apparently, it was a backlog of tests that came through all at once. Uh, they, LA County is way back down low. California is still low overall, and uh, and not having the ninety percent increase in hospitalizations that our public health officials officials guaranteed us a month ago that was going to happen by yesterday. Instead, it was a ten percent decline. Um, Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, if you don't want me to use the term case demic, I'm happy not to. I don't really care what we call it as long as we understand what we're talking about. That uh, an increase in cases when people aren't getting sick is not, it, it's concerning because, right, it can get out of control and spread to the risk populations. And again, and the other thing is when you get in these really large numbers, even though you're not talking about a, a significant likelihood of somebody getting seriously ill, even if it's 1% of millions, now you've got some problems on your hands. Uh, I, you know, just, we were watching, Susan, Susan and I were watching a TV show last night, and it was talking about this guy that lived in New Jersey at the turn of the 20th century. And he had seven kids, and uh, they all died, either in childhood or young adulthood, of an infection. It's six, six of seven died, and, and two wives all died, in everybody before the age of 30. And I thought that was the way we lived. You got an infection, you died. That, that was sort of what the human experience was. And since antibiotics, we have changed that. But we've seemed to have like completely, um, I guess, become unrealistic with our biological reality. I don't know how else to say that, that there are nasty viruses that can come around and it will kill lots of people. And there's only so much we can do about it. And what we really need to work on is the vaccine therapies and the and the pharmacotherapies that we're getting together. But I'm not sure that beyond flattening the curve so we don't overwhelm our healthcare system, that I'm I'm increasingly convinced that, that it's a I'm just looking at the data on mental health, I'm looking at the data on poverty, I'm looking at the data on substance abuse, and it just gets worse, worse, and worse. Um Andrew, yes, Andrew's, uh, Dr. Zelenko's paper, he's going to talk to us about when? Tomorrow, Susan? Zelenko? No. Oh, he's having trouble getting booked. Um, it's not a randomized placebo-controlled study, and so people aren't taking it as seriously, It's, but it is peer-reviewed, and it's in a pretty good journal, so it is something to sort of add to the evidence that there might be something to the Zelenko system, but because it's not uh, placebo-controlled, People aren't going to take it that seriously. And we still... Wednesday, tomorrow with Carlos. Oh, Zelenko may come on this stream on Wednesday. Right. Okay. Uh, and you can uh, e email Ethan Klein and get him too, Susan. Uh, what are the flu figures? I don't, all we know is they're way down. Way, way, way down. Uh, and I don't. I really don't know how they collect the flu figures or how they collected them on previous years. I just know that the reporting is that they're way down. Uh, Richard says, I've been isolated. I've never been better. That's interesting. There are people, Richard, that are responding positively to all this. Um, most people are not the case because we're living like drug addicts, which is isolated, disconnected socially, depressed, not able to meaningfully engage. Uh, it's all the stuff that drug addicts do. We're being required to do. Uh, recently had an A1C of 9.2. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tim, be very careful getting off the Seroquel. Uh, whoever put you on it needs to think about why they put you on it, what might be a substitute. Seroquel does make you eat. And so if your uh, A1C is up and you've been eating more, the Seroquel could be related to that. Uh, specific reason why Europe is struggling right now? I mean, we don't know. We don't know why viruses do what they do. Uh, that's the bottom line. Uh, though you can predict it will not go away. It just doesn't kind of go away. And... Uh, um, yeah, it, so it's not surprising that we get into more trouble. The, the great thing is we're not getting into hospitalization or death rate. I don't know what's happening in Europe, whether they're having more trouble or not. Talking sports, have I heard of long-term suboxone causing very low testosterone? Opiates of all type suppress testosterone. 
and menstrual cycling, but uh, especially low testosterone. Any opiate does that. Uh, okay. Did you see some brioche buns? I did not. Uh, can I, can I tell you what you think about home use red light therapy? I don't know what red light therapy is. Uh, you talk, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that is even. So there you go. Um, did I see that China just tested over 2 million people for an outbreak of a hundred cases? I did not see that. Um, what was their point to try to localize it, to control it? You know, what it did happen in New York though, that I thought was great, uh, is that they, there's been several clusters of outbreaks here in New York and it was about three weeks ago. They locked down the local organizations and cities and little neighborhoods. They really curtailed any moving about in those areas and businesses for two weeks. And that was it. They got their, they got control of it and they stopped. They opened things back up again. That is how, that's a great example of how we should be doing these things. Somebody asked uh, how, uh, there has never been a cure for any disease. Roy, have you ever heard of antibiotics? Uh, have you, <laughs> there are so many cures for so many diseases. Um, I don't even know where to start, but definitely antibiotics, particularly uh, bacteria cidal, meaning they kill bacteria, uh, kill and cure in bacterial infections. Uh, so why are we still pursuing lockdowns? Fernando, that is the big question. I'm, I'm feeling increasingly worried about that uh, in that the World Health Organization says that, that they do nothing. Uh, they may even increase transmission because most of the transmission occurs in the home. And uh, they um, only make poor people poorer, which is really what we're talking about here. Um, that's how it is done in, count, in California, county by county, Kimberly. <clears throat> County by county is far too big. I'm talking neighborhood by neighborhood. They did it here, borough by borough, not even not even full boroughs. Uh, they did very localized lockdowns, and had great success doing that. So county by county, you're going to lock down Riverside, L.A., um, San Bernardino, Orange County. I mean, they they're never those. They're so big, they're never getting out of their lockdowns. It's just the way it is. Uh, <laughs> at what point should we worry about the curve uh kimberly i'm not quite sure what you mean by that what and what do you mean by worry uh, I, I, in other words I, at no point should you panic uh at every point uh it seems to me you should be doing the things we kind of know work and be motivated to do them uh systematically and, and diligently and uh, if you get it, don't panic and certainly don't get around uh, older people. But I would urge you to talk to talk to older people. They are getting sick of this. The ones I talked to lots of them and they don't want to be treated differently anymore because they don't know how much time they have left. Uh, if you're 80, you know, if you're 80 years old and people aren't coming around you, you only have three years left and you, they want you to cash in one full year of your remaining three years. That's insane for a 10 percent risk of something happening to you. Then I could see if I were 80 years old, I would not put up with that. So, uh, Kelly Gallagher, we are not having fun in New York. We're fine. We're on a lockdown. I'm on a quarantine. I just got another COVID test. I'm getting them every other day. I, I'm on a lockdown for um, a teen mom reunion this week in a couple of days. Uh, so once we get into that, I can we can start to go outside again. Uh, do I think the kids with special needs could be allowed back to public school? Yes, I do. Uh, and again, the schools are opening up all over the country uh, with limited transmission. They're studying it. They're done properly. It seems to go just fine. And doing half measures seem to not necessarily have that much uh, psychological benefit for the kids. They're still in a, in a, they're in a terrible quandary. Uh, FDA officially uh, authorizes remdesivir uh pro proved there was no clear benefits in its use and definitely um dustin that's simply not true uh there have been studies that that are uh that have said what you were saying that there are no clear benefits and no benefits in mortality however the three studies that the fda relied upon to uh, make the approval showed clear-cut benefits marked benefits particularly for the very sick folks uh, reduced ICU use, uh, getting out of the ICU, reduced mortality, m multiple endpoints that look good in those three studies. Uh, Lindsay, for sure. Uh, yeah, Lindsay, they do storm off the stage very often. Uh, they were talking about the team mom uh, people, folks. Um, 
Yeah, there, it, it's not clear. I think I'm just going to be alone with Nessa with a bunch of Zooms. Uh, Germany and Chinese epidemiologists refer to this as both bloodborne and airborne pathogen. Uh, bloodborne? I don't know. Uh, you're still, we still give blood without necessarily having a COVID test. At least we're doing it for a long time. Uh, Miss Kaylee, I don't know what you want to know about Purdue. Uh, again, they paid their money and, uh, they were, they particularly were egregious in their promotion of Oxycontin recent, recent years where it was clear what was happening. And yet they, uh, they sold, soldiered on. Uh, Dr. Yo seemed not to like the remdesivir news. Uh, I don't know. I, I thought those studies were pretty good. Now, Dr. there's still Yadigar controversy about it. What's that? Dr. Yadigar. Uh, Dr. Yadigar liked using remdesivir. He's had good results with it. Uh, so things are getting better or worse, Mark? That is the question. <laughs> are things getting better or worse? I, I'm. They're getting worse. Of course, they're getting worse in terms of number of people catching the virus. The question is, are they getting worse for real in terms of hospitalization and death rate. I mean, in, in the, the really the discouraging part is that it's not getting better, right? And you'd like to see it get better and stay better, but you know, it, it comes and goes, it fluctuates. And uh, I, I'm increasingly convinced that it's large gatherings that are the main uh, perpetrator. I mean, we had large gatherings in Southern California. We had large gatherings in Washington. We had large ga gatherings in Wisconsin. And wherever you see these large gatherings, you see the outbreaks. You had large gatherings in the Dakotas with the Sturgis event. I mean, wherever you get, see it, you see the thing pass around. And why wouldn't it? So uh, after getting COVID, will lungs get better? Yes, in the vast majority of cases. Uh, to counting two cases, two tests is two cases. Uh, McDonald's Pharma, there are some fraudulent things going on out there, but I don't know how bad it is. Uh, yes, Kelly Nessa is going to co-host as well. She'll be there. Um, do I think I'll be able to attend a large concert or spring of 2021? If you get the vaccine, see, if you get the vaccine, you go back to normal, right? Well, I don't know if it's going to be a two-parter or not, but almost immediately you go back to normal. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's what we need. We need to get that vaccine out. Of course, the state of California has decided they're not going to allow it because they know best. What are you going to talk about? What am I going to talk about? Once the vaccine comes out. Oh, what am I going to talk about once the vaccine comes out? We're going to go back to homelessness and drug addiction and alcoholism. Oh. Plenty to talk about there. <laughs> Plenty of things to talk about there. Yeah, I think Night Stalker, that kids going back to college, have significantly added to the uh, cases. And I was, I've talked to a couple of, uh, of different states out there, and they all say, yep, there's been an increase in universities. No hospitalizations, nobody that sick amongst the young people. Uh, where am I getting my test done? I don't know. MTV is sending a nurse over uh, every other day to get them done. I, it's done here. And it's a high it's a high nasal one. I got to say, it's getting more painful every time she does it. I can go out and get sick. Yeah, Susan did not have to get tested. Uh, uh, Trey, what did, did Trey Massey ask me something? What'd you ask, Trey? Mm. Is it clear why H1N1 didn't spread farther? It did spread very far. It infected a half a billion people. It's just they lucked out in terms of it not, you know, really spiraling out of control. It was just strictly luck. Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, they just they just took a, a certain tact. Uh, that if anybody in the government would take that tack now, people would crucify them, which is fascinating. Uh, but then it was a much more conservative approach, and it t turned out to be fine. I'm not seeing a Trey's question, so maybe he ought to ask it again. Trey, I'm not seeing it, buddy. Uh, somebody said, good question, Trey, and I'm not seeing it. The new normal with many issues now exposed that they're already here. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. What age do you mean amongst the young people? I mean college age, Mark. People in college age did not get sick. They got the illness. Yes, H1N1, Mark um, Max, was terribly brutal. Um, what? Okay, Jason, what I was talking about, the relative herd immunity, is it, it, herd immunity is a, a sort of an absolute term, right? What's the uh, overall uh, population uh, percentage that after which you really are protected against most... It just sort of stopped spreading it. That's 70%. Uh, 
but uh, on the cruise ships, which is one of these isolated environments, we can look at what the what the sort of the uh, the spread rate is. It stopped at twenty percent, and so you have to ask yourself why twenty percent in each cruise ship. Is it because something about the virus? Is it something about the host, meaning our genetics? Or is it something about our behaviors? As if something gets going, we start staying away from each other. And so the relative herd immunity based on behavior is what I was kind of talking about. There's no such formal thing as that. I was just sort of describing something. Leopold, uh, Flomax should not affect sexual performance. If anything, it should yeah. help because things kind of, you're evacuating more fully. It helps lymphatic drainage and stuff too. Uh, but it does drop testosterone levels a little bit. So maybe you're having a, an effect that way. Oh, no, Flomax doesn't. I beg your pardon. Flomax shouldn't do that. It's the Proscar that does that. So, uh -uh. Uh, Valerie, you see Trey and I don't. Why am I not seeing Trey Massey's um, comment? Probably no. Probably not laugh out loud. Oh, there's Trey. Will more honest discussions take place and better... Info be available after the election. I don't know. Uh, for a while, I thought that was true, but the panic, the press is so addicted to the panic porn. I don't think you're going to see honest press, and people are so wedded to demanding behavior from on high rather than encouraging behavior the way we've always done that I, I it, it feels like a... a I don't know. It feels like something that's not gonna not gonna stop till we get out of this thing. Do I think it's better not to wait on the homeless? Drug talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm. I got plenty to talk about. If people want to talk about. If a family member had COVID and now has the antibody, is it okay to be around them without a mask? Sure. They're they're immune. That's it. They're good to go. Now, how long that lasts is a good question. Um, you sounded like your dad. Wow, panic porn, great term. It is a great term, Joanne. Uh, and, and the press is just solid panic porn. That's all it is. It's, re it's really kind of ridiculous. What age groups most likely stay out of trouble with COVID? Well, children can't get infected. They don't have the the prime, the binding site, they don't, the ACE2 binding site on the surface of their respiratory tract. So the virus can't get in in the vast majority of children. Once you hit mid-adolescence, they start producing that that uh, receptor, uh, and so they can get they can get infected. They don't typically get very sick, if at all. Now the children, though, although they can't uh, get get infected per se, they can pass it. Apparently, um, they can do Linda saliva tests, and they can do uh, lower nasal test swabs as well. I've had all of them. I've had all of them. There's a rapid PCR. There's a rapid antigen test, and there's a standard PCR, and that's the one I've been getting out here. Uh, 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 uh. If you breathe and you hear a crackle temporarily, what is that over and, and why does it go away? <clears throat> that is just something in your airway, in your in lower air, mid to lower airways. The, you're producing mucus all the time, and sometimes that mucus builds up a little bit, creates a little valve, and you hear that kind of crackliness. Uh, what's called um, something called ronchi, totally under Sorry, control. Teen moms also quarantined. Yes, they are, but I don't think we're going to see them. I think the families are going to be together, but we're not going to specifically see them. Um, do I think COVID will be annual like the flu? Um, I do not. It does not seem to be changing that much. Uh, are there effective effectiveness differences between PCRs? The classic, the standard PCR and the rapid PCR are probably the best ones. Does vitamin D help? We think so. So about somewhere between two and 5,000 units of vitamin D. Um, yeah, no. Okay, uh, Mark, uh, have you heard about people and doctors mistaking mountain fever for COVID? Uh, yes, not only that, uh, Mark, I believe that a lot of the Kawasaki syndrome the post-inflammatory syndrome that we supposedly are seeing in, in younger patients after COVID or in fact having typhus. Because I saw some of the hand rashes and some of the kids having it, and they were classic typhus rashes, not Kawasaki's rashes. So I hope somebody starts doing, and it's an obscure test for typhus, it's, it, and it's hard to do. But I hope doctors begin thinking about that. Can I explain it's a good thing it's not annually? 
you, well, it's a good thing if it doesn't come back and we don't have to keep changing the vaccine or guessing about the vaccine. Uh, remember recently the Sturgis motorcycle ride went on as usual, a few hundred thousand. Do we have a true honest feedback on how that played out? Steve Larson, I, I think it caused a little spread. I think some of the things you're seeing in the Midwest was from the Sturgis uh, group. Though they went out and they studied businesses that had a lot of contact with the Sturgis uh, gathering, and there was no increase in those in those workers, which is kind of interesting. But you did see increases in the towns that were where Sturgis was, uh, were attending. So, you know. Uh, okay. Guys, uh, give me some good questions. If not, I'm going to wrap up kind of early. I've been sitting in front of doing podcasts all day and it's driving me crazy. As winter is coming, risk of flu, do I recommend vitamin C supplement? I do. I think 1,000 milligrams is a good idea. It may increase uh, readying T cells. I, I want you to know I'm very excited about Aditix, A-D-I-T-X, if you want to read about them. They've not yet uh, come out with all their materials, but hopefully in November... We're going to start teaching about what Aditix is capable of doing and then produce the test in January. And in January, we will be able to tell people if they're immune, even if they don't have antibodies to COVID, and whether or not they've had full vaccine response. And the, the, the grail that we're going after is whether or not we can enhance immune function to help fight off. Now we're just sort of guessing vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, all these things are helpful. Um, but we may be, have a way to measure that going forward. I know you're not running around in New York having a good time, but you guys still can have a lot of fun. Well, thank you, Kelly. Most of are we having we fun, do the Susan? Same thing we do every day. Yeah, work. we're doing what we always do. I work. Yeah, Susan has been working a lot. Today we're doing refinancing a loan. Oh yeah, she's working on uh, refinancing a loan so we can. We we've got we got hit pretty nastily during this uh, pandemic. We're trying to refinance. We do laundry. Uh, okay, hold on here. Uh. Miss Kaylee, my mental health is okay. It's not great. It's better. It's better. I think when I get when I have things to do that interest me, I, I I'm way better. Um, and talking sports, what would I say is the best treatment for someone really low testosterone that can't handle constant needles? Uh, talking sports, you need a diagnosis. Why is your testosterone low? And the 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 treat. It's like saying why do you have a fever? And is the treatment for all fever Tylenol so the fever goes down? Testosterone is only a symptom. It's not a disease. So what's disease or what condition is causing the low testosterone and that what should be treated, not just giving somebody testosterone. That, that is the wrong way to approach that. Uh, yeah, uh, Mary Lee Overson, great point. It's how kids feel sitting in front of a computer all day. Uh, did I hear th Newsom's Thanksgiving rules? I can imagine. I can just imagine. <laughs> I'm speaking on behalf of, uh, thank you, Jason Moore Pigman. I'm thinking on behalf of the North Dakota governor, and I was really impressed with how he's approaching things. So I have hope that some states are sane. They're, they're approaching and this and systematic and careful and rational, but not being totalitarian about it. Uh, Hamilton pulled out of depression so fast. Uh, hold on. I've never had something pull me out of, wait a minute. Oh, the watching Hamilton. Well, that's cool. Uh, thank you, Dunn997. Do I think flu cases have plummeted compared to last year? Why do I think? I think it's because we're all, you know, avoiding contact with each other. Uh, I don't know much about what's going on with Ronnie. I don't know if something happened. I've, I've not been listening to the show the last couple of days. Uh, I'm talking about Ronnie on Howard Stern show. Uh, do I have COVID? No, I do not. I'm being tested every other day. I'm on quarantine to make sure I don't get it. Um, again, uh, Gromaloni, uh, again, what's best cure for headache? Headache is a symptom. What's the cause of the headache? Is it a migraine? Is it a scalp tension headache? Is it a complex headache? Is it a, a cluster headache? Each have different treatments. So listen, here's the thing you've got to understand. If you don't have a diagnosis, you don't have a treatment. You can't even begin to guess until you have the proper diagnosis, then you can select the proper treatment. If you get the diagnosis wrong, you're just going to be throwing shit at the wall. Uh, thank you, Miss Kaylee. I hope this helps. Uh, uh, uh. Thank you, Joanna. I'm trying to keep it sane, trying to keep it low. Here, but again, I will say one of the things that I'm I've been increasingly thinking about is how the government has turned us into 
cheap is not a strong enough word, into powerless, languishing, it, it, by, by telling us to shelter in place and don't move, th that's not us. We need to fight this thing. We need to be encouraged to fight it, whatever that means. Take active action against, if that means wearing a mask, if that means social distancing, while you fight ahead in finding a way to do your job. Don't, the, 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 this nonsense of us just staying put is the most onerous way to deal with mental health. That makes you think about that. Or we have experiments on powerless dogs. We lock them and get, prevent them from moving and they get severely depressed. That's our models for depression out there. An old barbershop just close here. You were watching the news. Yeah, the government calls us a herd. Great. Thank you, Allie. Uh, doesn't it feel like government's so unprepared? Yeah, the, the, I couldn't have seen this coming. I don't think anybody could have seen a, a aerosol transmitted cold virus becoming so destructive and causing the cytokine storm, which is crazy. It's a crazy infection. But we are causing more problems by mistreating the population as some sort of as some sort of um, problem. Uh, we, we're the ones that need to fight. We need to think in terms of fighting. It helps our mood to, to, to be talked to positively, to think in terms of action, to think in terms of getting out in this and, and protecting yourself and doing systematic, doing carefully and all this stuff, but not by languishing. Languishing is the opposite of mental health. Um, and this is why I got in trouble at the very beginning. I saw this coming. I saw it coming and uh, I tried to push it back. And of course I got crushed for that. Um, they have deflected by another, uh, okay. Well, gatherings of all types clearly transmitted, period, end. If we want to do gatherings, how about we are masked at gatherings? That's fine. Um, Leopold, my problem with medical websites is that, um, the, 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 what? The, the problem with medical websites is that the information you get on a website is at most the information that every medical student has in their head at the end of second year. Then they will do another eight to 10 years of training of actually seeing these experience, these diseases as they manifest in the clinical setting. And it's a very different experience. The experiential learning of seeing them, the broad manifestation of these diseases and all their different, different variations, reading about it, learning about it, having it all categorized the way it would in a textbook or on a medical website does, again, at the end of, if, if, that, if that was all we needed, we start practicing medicine at the end of second year. It's nothing. It's Dunning-Kruger. It's thinking you knowing a topic, but knowing nothing. That's the problem with it. Now, if you're, if you have an illness and you want to learn something about it and you're just, you're just sort of educating yourself so you understand kind of what it is and what needs to be asked and what to expect, that kind of thing, and you, and you don't think of yourself as now understanding the topic, then I'm all for that. I'm all for inf informed patients, but, but don't fall victim to Dunning-Kruger. Thank you, Zero Cryption. I hope we get through this. We will get through this. Uh, some people think mask wearing in 1918 caused bacterial pneumonia. Yeah, zero. I, I would say that I, I've seen that theory does not fit for me at all. If that were the case, every surgeon on earth would have bacterial pneumonia. They spend hours and hours and hours with masks on every day. No increased incidence in bacterial pneumonia, please. Come on. Um, or, or, you know, if skiers or people that wear masks think about it that's, that's a that's a ridiculous theory not ridiculous that we should consider everything but it, it doesn't pass the sniff test uh, uh, uh wait a minute huge what's your name there what you've been out of your clinicals and learning nothing what do you mean by that you mean now you've not been able to go in and see patients uh power outages because of high winds in southern california great uh, choosing not to play hockey, you're 61 because I don't want to take the chance of getting it. Fine. Am I being overly cautious? I, I, you are entitled to make any decisions you want to make. What I don't like is the government mandating you not to play hockey. If you're if you're not playing hockey, you don't feel comfortable. Yeah. Why, why take that risk? I don't particularly want this thing. I, I wear a mask. My gravest fear, though, is that I'm going to get it and and give it to somebody else. So that's why I wear a mask. I, I want to make sure my droplets don't get anywhere and hurt anybody. If I'm going to get this thing, I'm probably going to get this thing. You know, that, that's, that's, um, uh, that's what I, I sort of am learning from uh, Dr. Kelly, who's Dr. Dr. Kelly victory coming in this week at all. No, no. 
but she made the point that this is kind of a fool's errand. We can slow it, but we can't stop it. And she feels like we're all gonna, we're gonna, people are going to get it, are going to get it. Just you know, all we're changing is sort of the time course of it, which is kind of an interesting way of looking at it. Uh, they want to know when Dr. Victory will be on again next next week. When we go home, probably. Yes. Not Has not been booked yet. Uh, Casey yeah, Gates says, "I know." Oh, B World C CDC said, "Rock hockey." Hockey is right for CDC says hockey is right for potential super spreading events. That makes sense. It's collisions and stuff. Uh, I don't know about super spreading. Again, the, again, that's panic porn using terms like that. Super spreading mean four people on your team get COVID. Is that a super spreader event? I mean, come on now. Uh, lockdown masks only serve to lower immunities. Yeah. And when people come out again, they will fall ill due to lower immunities. Well, uh, McDonald's Farm, uh, we're going to be testing for that. That's uh, going to be the Additix, uh, sort of ho their whole uh, purpose is to test to see if immune systems are up or down or what we can do to enhance them. Is the virus weakening? We don't know, Kimberly. Uh, it's possible it is. It's possible. Um, that it's uh, clearly it's causing less particularly in uh, states that have had significant outbreaks, the effects are less, but it's probably the result of good therapeutics and the fact that uh, we we um, are infecting younger people with it predominantly. Mm, tardive dyskinesia. What about tardive dyskinesia? Miss Kaylee? Seen lots of it. There are new, two new medications for it, by the way. Ingritza, and I forget the name of the other one. Uh, I have schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type. Is it okay to have kids? Well, Andy, again, treatment works. Uh, it depends, you know, and your ability to be stable and whether or not you think you can manage that. Uh, we'll see and have you back on, Kelly says. Apparently not. I've, they don't seem interested in me since uh, I left HLN. Uh, laryngospasm, how to stop panic when you can't breathe. Um, Bunny, check out the book Dare by Dr. McCona, McDonough. Dare, D-A-R-E, and it's really about uh, breathing techniques uh, for laryngospasm. Uh, Oz says there's an increase in teeth grinding from stress. Yes, I'm sure of that, Kelly, and I'm positive. I'm not surprised about that as at all. Uh, what are they saying about COVID and asthma? That uh, asthma is a risk factor, but it, you know, it's it, only if you have severe asthma, really. Mm -mm -mm. Talk to my doctor, Andy. I don't know who that is. Uh, did I see the CDC telling people to stay away from deli meats due to a listeria outbreak? Uh, young tag, that depends. Listeria gets into cheeses periodically and deli stuff, but it's usually localized. You know, it's in a specific area. So I don't know. I didn't hear there was a listeria outbreak anywhere in particular. So. Mm. It's in the refrigerator. Uh, that's fine. Uh, mustard never goes bad. Doesn't go bad. Does mustard go bad, everybody? Please let me give me your opinion. March 20th. I know that's, the, but that doesn't. Mustard never goes bad, as far as I know. Um, we, I got to. We're about. To, <laughs> I got listeria from mustard. Which stimulus is the least harmful, Rachel? I think caffeine, probably. They said microwave it for five seconds. Hmm. Uh, Sarah Moore, did you see comment up there to you? I did not. Uh, I do not. Vinegar never goes bad. Huh? No, it does not. Everyone, they're saying no. Mustard doesn't go bad. Lot, lots of people have opinions about it. Mustard is more okay. So you guys, it's time for dinner. Susan very kindly made me a meal, and I'm going to take a break for that. I uh, hope we got a little something uh, accomplished. We're going to be very spotty going forward with the streams. We do have two good shows coming, right? Upcoming guests, Susan. Okay, she's going to put the banners up right now. Uh, and uh, and then Thursday and Friday, I have to do those teen mom reunions, so I will not be doing a stream. And then Saturday, we'll do a stream. And then Sunday, I have to travel. So and then, Wednesday, yeah. Tyra, we have cat temp tomorrow. Cat temp tomorrow. Tyrus on Wednesday. Uh, Leopold. Um, I would imagine, in terms of countering the obesity inflammatory component, eliminate carbohydrates, get your blood pressure under control, control cholesterol, 
Uh, I really think that eliminating carbohydrates made a big piece of the inflammatory component of obesity. So, yeah. So what do you got there, Susan? What do you got? Uh, hold on. Hold on. She wants you all to see a, a banner. So hold on. Give me some banners going up. Uh, it might be more people. Maybe I can get to like... Mass in the rain. Does that, that make thing. sense? Um, yeah, it does. It makes less, you know, mass in the sun make less sense. Uh, and the, the rain, you know, we obviously have, you're going to be breathing hard and trying to run out of the rain. You're going to be isolating in places where people are going to gather. And yeah, masks make good sense. Um, in the sun, you're pretty much protected. And that's the question. I think, I think it looks more and more though, like the gatherings that were, that are spreading this thing are outdoors in the sun. And if you're not social distancing and not wearing a mask, it's, it, it can be a problem. Um, uh, yeah, Lindsay, carbs do cause inflammation if you are insulin resistant, if you're insulin resistant. Uh, the, if you look at look at the do, work of Dr. Atia, they talk about the relationship between carbohydrate, insulin, really insulin metabolism and the apolipoprotein system uh, and the tendency for oxidation of cholesterol and atherogenesis. So it's, it's a thing. Uh, and, you know, our endothelial system, the lining of the arteries is probably where this inflammatory piece is going on. And so if you stop all that inflammatory reactions of the, the oxid, oxidative stress on the endothelium, you're downregulated probably at least some of the inflammation of obesity. Uh, okay. Caleb is put, uh, pushing it out there. Thank you, Caleb. Uh, I think we're going to find out a lot after the election, maybe. Maybe. Somebody says that. That makes no sense. I'm sorry your mask is soaking wet and dripping into your mouth. Well... <laughs> I, I'm not thinking in terms of the the wet. I'm thinking in terms of running inside and protecting yourself. I mean, I guess if you're outside alone in the rain, you don't need a mask. I mean, I, I always thought it was silly to, for people to wear masks when they're outside alone. That makes no sense to me at all. We are currently mandatory mandatory power outages because of the wind. You must be up north. Um, interesting, B-World. Yeah. George Clark says uh, Corolla made a point the other day where he said the only thing that isn't on fire in California are the homeless. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kat, the, the airplane travel looks really good. There's been a number of studies out uh, that, I, I mean, United put a big study out where they showed no transmission. I'm a week out from travel, big plane, didn't get it. I've been tested every other day. I, the airports, I've been, I was at the Atlanta airport a couple months ago or six weeks ago, and that seemed a little bit sketchy, people not wearing masks and, and getting a little close in small, closed environments. I didn't like that, but I felt like on the plane, very. The only thing on the plane I would advise is when they pass meals around, everybody takes their masks off all at once. That's a mistake. Right. So our thing is we don't eat. We bring our own food. We eat before or after everyone has eaten. We, we don't take our masks out when everybody else is taking their masks off. And we use a straw when we use when we're drinking. Planes uh, are fine. Why are cruises? Um, I I think you know cruises are a little different. It's a little more prolonged, right? The contact, but I do believe they're going to start cruises up again, and there'll be there'll be lots of good deals out there if you're willing to take those yeah. risks. Uh, okay, we're ready to go, Susan. Is that it? Oh, no, we're going on cruises. Yeah, eventually. That's our plan. Should I self-quarantine after attending a large wedding? I, Rebecca, that really kind of depends on what happens during the wedding. If you feel like people are in your face and, you know, you're worried about it, then ideally, yeah. You got to remember that, you know, something like 85% of um, infected people are sick within five days. I know we say two weeks and sometimes one week, but about 85% is in at five days. So if you're at five days aren't sick yet, you're probably pretty good. Um uh, Andy Pauline is not a professor just yet. She does teach, though, at universities. Um, Kelly Gallagher, I don't think she's tried that CBD yet. Susan, I'm dying of hunger. This smells so good. Can we, can we wrap things up here? Yes. Do I know that the mortality caused by anything for the year is on track? Yeah. Uh, do I know if the mortality rate caused by anything for the year is on the same track as every year? No, actually, we've gone below. We've dropped below expected deaths, which is an indicator that many of the people that died six months ago would have died around now. 
which fits with the nursing home data that the average life expectancy is six to 18 months. So that, that is kind of an interesting, I believe it's going back up towards, towards uh, normal. Uh, normal uh, life, uh, normal ex expected deaths. Okay. Uh, okay. 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, chat Tim, and a special hopeful guest. We'll, we'll see. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get a doctor in here too. But uh, but I have somebody kind of lined up. I'm working on Wednesday, 4 p.m., 7 p.m. Eastern. Taking your calls with Tyrus. And maybe we'll get Zolinko in here to talk about his stuff or Kelly Victory if she's free. But right now, these are our co-hosts and we're going to, because we're, we couldn't really plan in advance. So we're going to have our regular. Okay. Mahalo, Jason. Thank Did you, Jericho. I, I just held the mic over by your mouth so they could. Oh. I believe, I believe. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, Laura, I'm going to, when I finally get out in the world, it's going to be to go to MTV Studios on Thursday to see the Teen Mom crew. Um, we're talking about getting Nessa in here on the stream, too. We're hoping to do that because I won't, I won't tell anybody. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay. I can't announce somebody unless I have... I know, I'm trying to get her in here, so we're trying. Uh, it is cold already, B World. Sorry about that. Okay, y'all. Uh, Susan, you ready to ready to rock? Yeah, hold on. I'm uh, still looking at your guys' comments. Thank you, the vapist. Good to see you. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna play all the app at the end because it seems like it shuts down my computer. So. Okay, so she's gonna uh, our kind sponsors that help us do these streams and. Keep Susan wanting to work. Uh, oh, Chicago slowly shutting down again, Jack C. Jack C. I am sorry to hear that. Yeah. I, I think, again, lim limiting, you know, keep, bars make sense to me to keep limited. Uh, you know, most workspace places have not ramped up yet again anyway. Um, and uh, I just hate to see us locked down further. We should be fighting. Fight this thing. Fight it. Yeah. The, 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 I... Don't let it make you languish fight okay. it okay see you tomorrow see you tomorrow according to samsa's national survey on drug use and health approximately 20.3 million people above the age 12 suffer from substance use disorder incredible the disease of addiction takes an average of 130 americans every day Sadly, the opioid crisis, which many consider the worst pandemic of our time, has been even further perpetuated by the spread of COVID-19. Since the start of the coronavirus outbreak, drug overdoses have increased by 18%. Factors like economic stress and social isolation have led to increased depression and unnecessary deaths. A Better Life Recovery is a premier addiction treatment center in Southern California, offering one of the most highly regarded and comprehensive addiction treatment programs in the United States. Dedicated to helping its clients achieve complete inner and outer transformation, they offer a 45 to 90 day program custom tailored to meet the needs of each individual client. Long term is the way to go. Many of A Better Life's clients elect to stay up to nine months to receive additional support. A Better Life Recovery will do whatever it takes for as long as it takes to ensure the success of every client. Are you ready for a better life? Go to abetterliferecovery.com or call 866-581-4401 now. The World Health Organization estimates that each year approximately 1 million people take their own life. That's one death every 40 seconds. Experts predict the numbers would peak in 2020, but no one could have imagined the devastation brought on by COVID-19. During the coronavirus pandemic, many experience anxiety, sadness, and loneliness. Existing mental health conditions, including severe anxiety and major depression, may worsen. If you're feeling hopeless, contemplating self-harm, or you're concerned about someone else, I'm here to tell you there is hope. A mission for Michael is dedicated to helping clients achieve complete inner and outer transformation. Mission for Michael is the premier resource for intensive mental health treatment in Southern California. With an astonishing two-to-one client-to-staff ratio, each client in their facility receives individual care 24 hours a day, overseen by a team of all doctored or master's level clinicians. With a focus on evidence-based treatment, along with personalized and compassionate care, they offer mental health treatment that can change lives. 
If you're suffering from mental illness or you're concerned about a loved one, go to amfmtreatment.com. Again, that's a mission for Michael, AMFM, amfmtreatment.com, or call 866-581-4401. Again, that is 866-581-4401. As we're gradually moving back to opening schools and businesses and, of course, our in-person interactions, I want to remind you, this is all time with cold and flu season getting going. Staying hydrated is key to helping your body deal with the added stress and with the upcoming flu season. My regular fans have heard me talk about a product called Hydrite for a long time now. It's an amazing rapid rehydration drink. It's a mix that, well, we're obsessed with here. I'm excited to announce they've just released Hydrolyte Plus Immunity just in time for cold and flu season. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity starts with their fast-absorbing electrolytes and adds a host of immune-boosting ingredients. Each single-serve, easy-pour drink mix contains 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C and 300 milligrams of elderberry extract, creates what is hopefully immune-boosting formula that's high in antioxidants and zinc. Combining this with Hydrolyte's seven key electrolytes, it's a fantastic way to stay proactive and properly hydrated. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity comes in convenient, easy-to-pour powder sticks, that rapidly dissolve in water and make a great tasting drink that has 75% less sugar than your typical sports drink. It uses all natural flavors and it is gluten-free, dairy-free, caffeine-free, non-GMO, and it is vegan. And you can find Hydrolyte Plus by visiting hydrolyte.com slash Dr. Drew. Again, that's H-Y-D-R-A-L-Y-T-E dot com slash D-R-D-R-W. And be sure to use our code Dr. Drew 25 at checkout for a special discount. 